Hi guys, Glader here. I'm going to show you a very short, small update about the project, I guess. The last video really had very poor pacing, so we're just going to get right into it. Uh, although this isn't going to be much more, I went ahead and implemented a mock-up UI for the Realm List and also implemented the Realm List packet, which had some small challenges because the serializer I had didn't support it and later in the video I'll go over the technical reasons for that and I'll go ahead and show you the temporary solution. I'm hoping it's not temporary but I have a feeling that it's not going to cover all cases. I still feel like there'll be edge cases out there for the structure of certain packets. But enough about that. Let's just go ahead and log in like before. And you can see I pull up a realm list and th these names aren't hard-coded. If you go into here and you connect same thing looks similar and if you end it and you take a look at the uh, currently I I don't want to create these objects at runtime because unity has poor performance in that sense so I'm just going to manually maintain entries or create a pool of entries not sure how I'm gonna handle it but this is just a demo so it doesn't really matter uh, the, the server name labels are default so they get changed at Runtime. So we're actually pulling this down from the server. This isn't, there's no faking here, except for some of the UI stuff. It's not really there. And you can see that we can continue to pull it down and authenticate as many times as we want. So yeah, I mean, probably not amazing, but the, the, most of the time was spent preparing the serializer for the weird edge cases. So I must talk a little bit about the technicals. So if you're just here to see this very tiny, unimportant update, go ahead and, I guess, leave the video now because we're going to get into, I guess, some of the code. We're going to pop into Trinity Core first. We're going to take a look at this right here, which is, uh, I guess they call it the realm flags or something. But if, if it contains a flag that indicates that the packet contains a specified build, or specifies the build, then it appends additional data, which is basically just the expansion or major version and build information of the, of what the server is for. Like this stuff's just defined in the uh, the Trinity Core auth table, realmless table. So it sends all that down. I think some people enable that. Some servers, I guess. I don't really think Blizzard sends that down. Probably, I'm not sure. Or Blizzard ever did, I'm not sure. So yeah, so that was a little difficult because you've got this flag up here that's written earlier in the packet. And you have to do some uh, bitwise operation to determine whether or not, you know, this data is going to be in there. And if we're going to, and if you watched the last video towards the end, you saw that we had a serializer which used metadata like this. Like you mark it up with metadata. If you've got a collection and you you don't want it to use the default size sending, you tell it, hey, send it as a U short. And you can see this down here, where we send a, a U short for the realm list size. That's how many realm infos are there. And so we use metadata to mark up these packets. We're not manually writing bits into the stream every time we create a packet. It's easier to maintain. It's what Blizzard does. It's what a lot of people do. But the challenge is we've got this flag, and I really didn't have support for... for uh, like a flag enum essentially and so what I had to do and I don't really like the result but I'm gonna show you anyway what I had to do is I had to create a we had to map child types to a single interface and what we get as a result of that other than just the usual polymorphic serialization which was supported before we now, I now added metadata for supporting flags. So if it sees a flag that indicates the build is specified, it will map to a realm complete information child type, which implements this interface. And then I also had to create some metadata to indicate uh, what should be the default. If it sees no flags or there's no metadata indicating what should be created, we use a default. And so I had to expand some of the metadata capabilities of both the wire contract to also include no consumption. I don't know what the where the best place to put this was. I didn't want to have to mark it in every single 
attribute for mapping child types to base types. So I just put it on the wire contract. I might not make it a parameter. I might make it a optional uh, property that you can set. C Sharp has good support for that with constructors. So yeah, I might do that. I'm not sure. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, so I had to create some metadata that dealt with flags. And so, yeah, that's what I spent most of my time on. Although it's although the serializer is written all right, the design's okay, it's not easy to implement, well, it's not super easy to implement new features like this, but it's also, I think, a lot easier to implement features than this if it was just a, a pile of, you know, code. I think it's, I was, it was designed for this case, not specifically flags, but for encountering cases in packet structures where I couldn't, you couldn't encode uh, the structure using existing metadata attributes. So yeah, I had to add that. So yeah, the exteriorizer, uh, let's hope this covers most cases. I know there's some other packets that have uh, flags that indicates additional data like there's an authentication packet, but it's never actually used. It never happens. So let me scroll up. Yet yeah, it, this never happens because it's for like authenticators or something like that. So I don't currently handle this case, and I hope there's no other packets that really have this. But if there is, I think I can deal with it. it I'll just have to expand upon the flag. Um, I just have to expand upon the flags metadata handler, I guess. So yeah, that's about it. Nothing too fancy. I thought it was cool though. It's probably not that cool. It's been done a uh, been done by several people, but it looks cool in Unity. I don't think anyone's other than Wowzer. I think there's a a WebGL client that's done stuff like this, but I don't I don't know. They're much they're much further ahead, so got to catch up to them. But yeah, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and happy holidays.